morning, everyone. How are you? Great. That's better than fine. That's what I was expecting. Nobody said, how are you? How are you? Awesome. We get to worship the Lord today. And there are a lot of exciting things happening today. I want to share with you. First of all, we have the Baptist of Miles and his family's over here. And we welcome them. That's always super duper exciting. Today we'll be rededicating or dedicating our teachers as well as installing a Robin Freckle as a teacher again. So just a lot going on as we worship and praise God. For our visitors this morning, we certainly welcome you. Our worship assistants have a booklet we'd love to share with you. It shares the message of God's encouragement. has a little card in it about information on Timothy as well. If you'd like one, just catch their attention as they walk through the aisle. Also this morning, if you would, please take a moment and fill out your attendance card, either through uh, the communication card in the front seat, in the seat pocket in front of you, except for you guys, you have to reach behind. And, or use the QR code on the bulletin if you receive that, scan it, and fill out your attendance as well. And also, uh, as you know, Timothy, we are certainly a church of prayer. I invite you to share any prayers today that you would like to share in the service that we can include and pray over. But if you have a prayer that you really don't want to make public, but would still love to have us pray over it, you can put it in the offering plate later on, and uh, we'll gather them and certainly include those in prayer. So before we begin this mo uh, morning, take a brief moment, we have a loaded service, and say hello to somebody sitting around you. Don't get lost. Pastor Ryan also has an invitation for any fifth graders where you, the parents, you feel like your son or daughter is ready or would like to, uh, you can contact Pastor Ryan and have that conversation with him. Uh, for all the other students, though, they're gathering together on August 28th for food, fellowship, and information. And so uh, look in the bulletin or Timothy Connect for more information, scan those QR codes and register. They would like to have you do that as well. And then also, uh, next week uh, in the evening uh, is a back-to-school to prayer opportunity within the community. And Pastor uh, Ryan invites you to join him as well as other brothers and sisters throughout the community who will be meeting downtown and gathered together and go around and pray uh, for the school, pray for the students and teachers and staff, all that stuff. So if you're feeling called and led to being a part of that next week, please meet them. The address is in the bulletin, or it's also in the Timothy Connect. And so we invite you to be a part of that as well. So let's get ready to worship. Praise God for the amazing things he's done. Let us rise together now as we join our voices and sing.
I shared with you this morning, it's always a special time when we get to witness the baptism of a child when God <coughs> declares them his child and promises them and makes them a part of his kingdom and an heir to eternal life, an amazing gift that we get to be a part of. So this morning we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lord instituted baptism, saying in the last chapter of Matthew that all authority in heaven on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I will be with you always until the end of the age. We also learned that we would be lost without the gift of faith given in Christ Jesus. That it is through this gift that we are delivered from sin, death, and the devil. It is Christ himself who comes, who died for those sins and for the whole world, that everyone who believes in him shall have eternal life. Matthew, Levi, and the tomb. Receive the sign of the cross that you have been redeemed by Christ who gave his life for you. Tyler and Katie, in asking the church to baptize your son, you are raising your child in the will of God's command. And as parents, you are accepting the responsibility of raising your child in the true faith and knowledge of Jesus Christ, bringing him to worship, allowing him to be a part of Sunday schools and all those school programs like BBS, where he gets to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. If this is your glad and willing intent, then say yes with the hope of God. And grant you have this opportunity, this amazing thing, to be Miles' sponsor. In it, you have the privilege to pray for Miles, witness his baptism, remind him of it, and also to encourage him in his faith as he grows in the faith and knowledge of Jesus Christ. If this is your glad and willing intent, then say yes with the help of God. And congregation as parents, it is our privilege too to come together to support Tyler and Katie in raising Miles in the faith of Jesus Christ, to pray for them, to encourage them, and to help them when needed. If this is your glad and willing intent, then answer yes with the help of God. Yes. Now, as we bring children to be baptized, we know that. They don't know a whole lot, and so we have this promise, the promise that Tyler and Katie made as well, to raise him in the faith and knowledge of Jesus Christ. And so we join our voices together in expressing that faith of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I invite you now to join me. I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, If you, as you have made Miles an heir of your heavenly kingdom, Lord, keep him in your grace and give strength to lead a godly life to the praise 
and to the honor of your holy name. Bring Miles at last with all your saints to the promised inheritance of eternal life, Lord, with you forevermore. It is through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, we pray. Amen. We present to you a baptismal candle. It's a reminder that he is in the life of Christ, that Christ is the light of the world. And so we would invite you each year to light this candle on his new birthday, his baptismal birthday, and reminding him of this very special day. Miles, this is a good thing. He was thinking about crime. I think he wants the candle. Is that what it is? So anyway, we thank God. We invite you to do that. You can blow that out as well so you don't. We also give to you this faith chip given by the congregation. And it's a wonderful place to store his candles or any of the cool little first Bibles or the teaching to use as an altar to pray. And so we encourage you to use that throughout your life. This morning, I would invite you then, the congregation, in welcoming Miles to the Lord's family. We welcome you to the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, the work of us in his kingdom. Amen. Now, here's the fun thing that I like to do, because we as a congregation have, have agreed that we are going to support this family and encourage Miles. And so the first thing we're going to do today is teach him the first verse. Jesus loves me. Are you ready? If you've been to my baptisms, you know that. And we're going to do it proud. Ready? Jesus loves me this I know for the For the fullness of your kingdom. Like the crowds in Jerusalem, we often yearn for an immediate and tangible display of your reign. Forgive us for our short sightedness and our desire for quick fixes. We confess our tendency to focus on earthly power and glory rather than yours. Forgive us when we seek our own advancement instead of seeking to build your kingdom. We take a moment now as we silently confess our sins to God, our Father. Brothers and sisters in Christ, remember the incredible gift of forgiveness given to you in faith. Through Jesus Christ, his sacrifice on the cross has washed away your sin and set you free from the bondage of guilt and shame. Know then that your sins are completely forgiven. Go with God's peace. Amen. You may be seated as we join our voices together now in the same.
the hearing of God's word, our first reading this morning will come from Isaiah. We'll hear about the brokenness of the world, but we're also reminded that God's salvation is eternal. The reading for this Sunday is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 51. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness and who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were cut and to the quarry from which you were hewn. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who gave you birth. When I called him, he was only one man, and I blessed him and made him many. The Lord will surely comfort Zion and will look with compassion on all her ruins. He will make her deserts like Eden her wastelands like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the sound of singing. Listen to me, my people, hear me, my nations. Instructions will go out from me. My justice will become a light to the nation. My righteousness draws near speedily. My salvation is on the way, and my arm will bring the justice to the nation. The islands will look to me and wait in hope for my arm. Lift up your eyes to the heavens. Look to the earth beneath. The heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment, and the inhabitants die like flies. But my salvation will last forever. My righteousness will never fail. This is the word of the Lord. Let us stand. <laughs> chapter 17 as we continue in our series of walking with Jesus we hear his message today about the kingdom from Luke 17 while Jesus uh, while traveling to Jerusalem Jesus passed between Samaria and Galilee when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come he answered them the kingdom of God is not coming with something observable no one will say, see here or there, for you see the kingdom of God is in your midst. Then he told the disciples, the days are coming when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you won't see him. They will say to you, see there or see here, don't run or run after, don't follow or run after them. For as the lightning flashes from the horizon to horizon and lights up the sky, so the Son of Man will be in his days. But first it is necessary that he suffers many things and be rejected by this generation. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated as we sing. Thank you. 
this time in our worship, it's time for the children to go and hear the message of Jesus with their friend, with their friends. If we have guests with us this morning with small children, it's for pre-K through fifth grade. They meet right over there at that door, and new parents, you're welcome to join them as well to see what it's all about. They'll stay together through the end of the service, and you can pick them up just right across the hallway out there in the music room. As we continue in our worship show this morning, it is our privilege to offer God back our gift of thanks through our tithes and through our offering, giving him thanks for the many blessings in our lives, for all that he has done for us and entrusts to us. I would also remind you, if you have a prayer this morning you would like to include, now is the time to have those ready for me. During this time, I'll walk through the aisles. Just hold them up. I'll gather them from you. Let us now continue with the offering of our Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, this morning we do indeed want to dedicate and install our teachers for the year ahead. So I'd like to invite all the Timothy Lutheran School teachers and staff to come on up here. You're going to make a line facing the congregation, please. Come on up. You can make up either steps. There's some on both sides. As they come up, uh, we embark on a new journey. Our, our theme for the year is Endure. It's a theme that carries throughout the school year from the book of Hebrews and the calling to be steadfast in our faith and our lives as we follow Jesus. I will have you run right there in the middle and the rest can kind of flank her. She has a little more to do today than the rest of you. So, um, and, and so we're excited. We've been praying for the kids that would be coming. They've been doing preparation as, as many of you other teachers out there know all the preparation that comes into the school year ahead. And so we ask of you as the congregation to keep this school in prayer this year. There are opportunities for you to serve in various ways, whether it's book buddies or coming in and sitting at the desk or other things that will arise that you'll see in Timothy Connects and the like. So be a part of all that's going on here and uh, keep these teachers in prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, according to the church's usual order today, we especially acknowledge Rhonda Kreckel, who has been called as a kindergarten teacher at Timothy Lutheran Ministries. This office has been established in love by the church to support the office of the Holy Ministry and to assist and strengthen fathers and mothers in their God-given responsibility to bring up their children in the nurture and instruction of the Lord. Rhonda has been prepared for the office by prayer and study and is returning to this office after a brief retirement.
Today, we reinstall her into her called position here at Timothy. So, Rhonda, do you believe and confess the canonical books of the Old and New Testaments to be the inspired word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice? Yes, I believe and confess the canonical scriptures to be the inspired word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice. And do you believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds, namely the Apostles, the Nicene, and the Athanasian creeds as faithful testimonies of the truth of the Holy Scriptures? And do you reject all the errors which they condemn? Yes, I believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds because they are in accord with the Word of God. I also reject all the errors they condemn. And do you confess the unaltered Augsburg Confession to be the true exposition of the Holy Scriptures? and a correct exhibition to the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? Do you confess that the Apology of the Augsburg Confession, the small and large catechisms of Martin Luther, the small called articles, the treaties of the power and the primacy of the Pope and the formula of Concord, as these are contained in the Book of Concord, are also in agreement with their one true faith? Yes, I make these confessions my own because they are in accord with the Word of God. And do you solemnly then to promise faithfully to serve God's people in the office of teacher in accordance with the Holy Scriptures and with the confessions? Yes, I promise with the help of God. Are you ready and willing to assume this office and this work this year? I am. Rhonda Creco, I install you to the office of teacher at Timothy Lutheran Ministries in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now you can step back. No, you don't love the center of attention here. Uh, now, Rhonda also joins with the staff here this year. Some have been called and others have been hired to serve Timothy Lutheran School as teachers and principals. So now I ask all of you, as we embark on a new school year, to join Rhonda in your commitment to assist and support the Office of the Public Ministry among us here at Timothy. At this time, I ask you this. Will you, trusting in God's care, seek to grow in love for those you serve, strive for excellence in your skills, and clearly present the gospel of Jesus Christ by modeling a godly life? Then answer, I will with the help of God. And now, Timothy congregation, you have heard this simple but significant declaration on behalf of the ministries happening here at Timothy. The promise is that they commit to serve our children and to serve this community. Will you then in return show them love and honor? Will you support them by your gifts and fervent prayers? If so, then you answer, we will with the help of God. You see, that is the beauty of the ministry here at Church and School of Timothy, is that we get to walk alongside each other. And so may we be encouraged in that. As the ministry that happens in these doors from these individuals Monday through Friday and sometimes Saturday and Sunday too, is the outstretch of the ministry unfolding for all of us. So let us come to the Lord in prayer, asking his blessings upon all that is happening here in Timothy. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the faithfulness of these teachers, for their commitment to these students, to the families, and Lord, even more their commitment to you. I pray, Lord, that you would grow them in their faith this year as they face challenges and they face hardships and as they also experience joys that you, Lord, would deepen their walk with you, that they would be salt to this community, that they would be light to this world, especially inside these doors, and that you would give them strength to overcome the challenge that they face. Lord, may we together as a ministry reach those who may not know you. May we continue to impart the wisdom and the truth of the faith found in the scriptures to each of our young people who walk through these doors. And may this year be a year where we think about endurance, knowing that this race that you have called us into leads us to eternal life. Thank you, Lord, for each of them. Would you continue to journey with their families and encourage them in faith and life and the ministry and callings they've been given. We pray all these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Let's give them a little, little love.
and you are welcome to hang whichever way you came as they make their way back to their seats. Just a brief note as they're doing that. So, so there is difference between hiring and calling teachers. Rhonda, uh, why didn't we do that for every teacher? Well, there's certain teachers who have walked through a specific educational journey that doesn't just uh, prepare them to teach, but prepares them to teach in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. And so Rhonda has done that in the past. And so we consider her a call teacher. And opposed to some of our other teachers, so we have other called teachers, but we have some other teachers who have simply been hired and are possibly even going through the process right now of going through what we call the colloquy to be not just a teacher, but a Lutheran school teacher. So just wanted to share that too. Thank you, Pastor Ron. This morning as we continue in our worship, it is our privilege to go to our Lord in prayer, sharing with him our celebrations as well as our concerns. And this morning we want to include a prayer for Luann Cundy uh, at the death of her daughter Tracy, and so we want to pray for God's uh, peace and comfort to be with her as she mourns the loss of a daughter. Also, we want to include uh, Terry Calvin this morning, who was in the hospital. I believe he may have been released, but we pray for his health and God's continued care for Terry. And then also this weekend as Terry and Gail Calvin celebrate their 56th wedding anniversary, and then also a prayer of thanksgiving for Judy and Fritz Barlag, who are here with us today as they celebrate their 57th anniversary. And so we certainly want to praise God for that as well. This morning, actually, we should just give them a great thank God for letting us. <laughs> Fritz loves the attention. I can see his big smile. He's like, don't be that. This morning after each prayer, I will say the words, Lord, in your mercy, I would invite you then to respond with, hear our prayer for Jesus' sake. Let us rise as we go to our Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we contemplate this journey of your Son, Jesus, towards Jerusalem, our hearts echo the anticipation of the crowds who walked with him. We yearn for the fulfillment of your kingdom, a realm of justice and peace in your divine presence. It is our desire, Lord, that resonates deeply within us as your children in this age. Open our hearts to a deeper understanding, Lord, of your kingdom. May we see it not as an earthly empire, but as an eternal reality, a reign of love, grace, and righteousness within and around us. Help us, Lord, to recognize that your kingdom is already present and yet not fully consummated. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer for Jesus' sake. Jesus, even with hardships, we experience your blessings in this life. We thank you for the opportunity, Lord, that you give us to share the hope we have in you and to share that with others. Lord, we pray that you would deepen our resolve to be ever ready to extend a helping hand uh, to others, especially those who are facing trials of health, spiritual warfare, or even emotional struggles. Lord, we certainly lift up Luann this week at the passing of her daughter. Lord, we pray for peace and comfort to be upon her and the rest of the family as well. And Lord, we pray that you would continue to grant health and healing to Terry as he faces his health challenges. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you for the many ministry opportunities we have in transforming lives through Christ, through many opportunities here at Timothy that you provide. Lord, be with our school, our staff, the students, as they prepare for a new year in studies and learning about Jesus. But Lord, we also thank you for all the volunteers that give up their time and their talents and treasures to support the school ministry. We with the school, Lord, as they too prepare to begin a new year, thank you. Thank you for all the opportunities that you give us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer in Jesus' name. And Lord, we certainly thank you for the gift of marriage. We give you thanks for Judy and Fritz and for Gail and Terry as they celebrate their monumental days of, of long marriage, Lord. And we just continue to pray a blessing upon them. And this morning, Lord, we also pray that you would be with our call committee as they begin to discuss and discern the candidates received for the position of, of our senior pastor here at Timothy. Lord, grant them wisdom and guidance as they work through the process of narrowing it down to the one that you already have planned for us. May the committee be 
energized and encouraged with this task at hand. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer for Jesus' sake. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us what it means when we pray together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated as we continue and join our voices in song. Good morning. Good morning. You see, normally I think I have you standing and I looked around and I see you sitting and I didn't know what to do. I'll start talking. What a great time it is that we have to gather together for worship. Continuing in this series of walking with Jesus, I love it as it talks about this application of life sometimes. That God has this expectation perhaps for us to be a part of his kingdom which we're going to talk about today. But the struggle is, is that there are many people that are like the Pharisees in our reading who are asking the question, where is this kingdom? When is it going to begin? I mean, when you look around at the world today, can you really say with confidence or feel with confidence perhaps that the kingdom of God is among our midst? It's a struggle sometimes, isn't it? We want to ask God that question. Where, where are you, God, when all this stuff is going on, all this terrorism throughout the world, all this evil continues to happen? God, what's going on? When is your reign, when is your kingdom going to begin? And that's what the Pharisees were kind of after. God, you know, when, when are you going to come, Jesus? When are you going to start doing this thing and be our King, when is it going to start? Well, as we witness this morning in the waters of holy baptism, the kingdom of God is at hand. It's in the very presence of Jesus. And through the waters of baptism, we become a part of God's kingdom. It is a gift that is delivered by God. We live in that kingdom today. We live in its very presence. But I still think we struggle on asking the question, when will it come? And Jesus takes time out of his journey into Jerusalem to explain what it's all about, that it's not what you expect. It perhaps maybe isn't what you are hoping for, is what he was saying to the Pharisees as he shares these words. Jesus replied, the kingdom of God is not something that can be observed. Nor will people say, here it is, or there it is, because the kingdom of God is in your midst. Well, what does that mean? 
I mean, the kingdom of God is where God's love reigns, where we feel the love of God in our lives, as the Holy Spirit perhaps is working, when we feel the love of our brothers and sisters in Christ, when we see the will of God at hand and working, God's kingdom in its presence is going on. But yet, maybe not as we expect. And the reality is, no one, you know, knows. Yes, there is this reality that there is this future kingdom that's coming. When Jesus says, I promise that I'm going to return and you're no longer going to have to face this junk of life that you continue to deal with, the pain and suffering of sickness, of death, of Satan tormenting your life, of all this temptation, yes, that day is coming and we pray about it. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. What a glorious day that will be, won't it? When the full expression of God's kingdom is among us. When the Son of God is revealed in His glory. Come, Lord Jesus, come rescue us from this torment. But Jesus reminds us the path is not simple, especially for Him. Because before it all can come in its fulfillment, Jesus reminds us that he must suffer. He's going to take on all that sin and that pain and all that weight that we have on our lives. That he will die when he goes to the cross. But thank God that's not where he stayed as he rose again from the grave. And we have that empty tomb. And so... Deep inside, we yearn for God's fullness of his kingdom. So what is it then that we do today? This is what I love about this Walking with Jesus series. What am I supposed to do, Lord, in my life? I thank you for all that you have done. I thank you that Miles was baptized today and is in God's kingdom and has that inheritance of eternal life. I thank you, Lord, but what do I do today? What am I supposed to do with this in my life? And the truth is, it's a loving presence. It's living in the present. Hopeful for a future. For a future. So how is it then that we live in this present? Well, part of it's being prepared because in the book of Matthew, Jesus reminds us that no one knows that hour or that day when the sun will return. Not even he knows. Not even the angels know. No one knows. And so we live this life today wondering when Jesus is going to come back. And so we live in that hopeful future awaiting for him. And the challenge for our lives is we're kind of selfish. I know I am. Maybe we don't always have time to give God. Maybe we don't always have time in our lives to spend in His Word. Maybe I'm selfish about what I want to do in my life, and I don't always die to self. Last week when Pastor Ryan was preaching, I was just listening to it, and I, I'm always reminded that we have to carry our cross. And that can be a difficult journey as we live in the present, waiting for this hope and future, is that we carry our crosses. You see, we carry our crosses as we await for this future hope. Because there are a lot of people in this world who don't know Jesus. They don't know the love of Christ. They don't have that promise, inheritance of eternal life, what they have is a ticket to hell. And Jesus is telling us in our reading today and beyond that this is important. It's important that you know that as brothers and sisters in Christ that we celebrate and give thanks to God for all he has done for us. But these empty chairs that are sitting here today almost can be viewed as people who have no hope who don't know Christ. 
I mean, Jesus gives us in our reading, past our gospel reading, two examples, some amazing warnings of how we should be prepared in helping others to come and know Jesus Christ as their Savior. And the first one was Noah. God's Word says, Just as it was in the days of Noah, so it will also be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating, drinking, marrying, and being given in marriage. Up to the day Noah entered the ark, then the flood came and destroyed them all. They didn't have the benefits of social media and Facebook and Instagram of knowing everything within a flash of a second of what was going on in their lives. They were living their sinful lives going on day by day, some of them getting to see what Noah was doing, thinking he was a crazy man. What do you mean this boat's going to float in rain we've never seen? And Jesus reminds us of this warning. The people weren't prepared. They were living against God, and God destroyed them. And there was no time to change. No time. Now, it wasn't the flash of an eye that the flood came. It took several days. But they watched it. And God destroyed them all. And then, in the reading, God goes on and says, shares another story. Not just one, but he reminds us of how important this is as he shares about the days of Lot. As he is a follower of God, as he goes into Sodom and they see all this sin and, and crud and corruption going on in their communities they are, as they are living with the accepted way of life. Ignoring who God is, the Lord. People pleading with them. And as Lot and his family are walking away, God sends fire down on Sodom and destroys it while people are eating dinner celebrating in marriage. Whatever it is they're doing in their daily lives, it ended. It was over. There was no second chance. There was no last minute people or person of, you know, chance of saying, oh Lord, I'm sorry, please don't do that to me. No, it happened and it was done. And Jesus is reminding the Pharisees and the people, this is what I'm talking about about this kingdom at hand that you live in the midst of, that I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back and I'm going to take all those who believe in Jesus, me, my son, to God's eternal kingdom. And it'll be a glorious day that we celebrate. Thanking God that we don't have any more of that junk in life that we face here today. Praising God that Satan's been totally defeated. He's out of the picture. There's no more death. We're tired of sickness and cancer and all this stuff. But here's the thing. It happens like a flash. It's over. The people that don't know Jesus are in hell. That's scary stuff. And Jesus is warning us. This is why we live today in the presence of God's kingdom, of, of Jesus, so that we have this opportunity to transform lives through Christ. Is that important? Yes, it is. As you have this opportunity to share the love of Christ with those who don't know him, we do it because... Wait, we want people to have what we have in our faith in Jesus Christ. We want to have them welcomed into the arms of Christ. We want them to be a part of God's family when Jesus comes. A lot of people fear about what's going to happen on that day that Jesus comes. They talk about the rapture and all that stuff. But I think God makes it very clear. It's going to happen like this. Like lightning that flashes across the sky. There are no more second chances. We'll be celebrating. We'll be having fun. We'll be praising Jesus. We'll be reunited with our loved ones. But there will be some serious upheaval going on to the rest of the world. We get to live in that future hope of what is to come. We get to live in that day living 
in that presence. So again, what is it we're supposed to do? Well, there's just a few things I want to share. One is practicing compassion. Having compassion for other people. It's so easy, and we see it all the time, don't we? The anger that's going on around our world. The words that get shared. Where is the compassion in all of this, of helping the, the hurting, the needing, the needy? Where is the compassion for those who even don't know Christ to give of enough time to share with them? Because we don't know the hour Christ is coming back, and it's important to do today. We also, as part of living in God's kingdom today, is that we seek justice, protect others, help them, provide for them. I mean, God gives us this government, police. No, it's not perfect, but it is a means by which he has given us to protect ourselves in this life today, to bring justice to the world, but also to spread God's peace how many people don't live in God's peace? I mean, even brothers and sisters, myself, don't always feel like I'm experiencing God's peace. As brothers and sisters in Christ, we encourage each other. We are reminded that God has given us peace in Jesus Christ, that we don't have to live in such hostility in our world, that we don't have to live like this, but that we share it with others. That's how we live today as we're walking with Jesus in our lives, waiting and preparing for the day he comes back. I mean, there's accounts and parables all over the gospel readings that talk about the importance of being prepared and being ready. And God shares with us the two accounts from the Old Testament because they're real. We see them. We read about them. We know they're true. The flood came, it wiped the entire world out. And we hear about how God destroyed Sodom. Sometimes God allows people to live their lives the way they choose. He doesn't desire to have puppets in his life. He wants us to love him. It is a will that he gives to us and we want to share that with others as we go on through our lives. And so I think it's important that we practice this humility of sometimes having to humble ourselves and sharing God's forgiveness or our forgiveness with someone else and even receiving it. Not only just saying, I'm sorry, but if somebody has wronged you and they tell you you're sorry, you receive it with a humble heart, with humility. And allow God to work with that as we live in God's kingdom today. And so maybe the question, you know, is, so what, what do I do with my life? How do I help? And it can happen in such small ways. Just two weeks ago, eight of us gathered together to go to a soup kitchen. But we didn't serve soup, we served chicken. Down in our Redeemer, downtown on Benton Avenue. Not really a very safe road. It's kind of scary. And I was really amazed when I walked in and I started seeing the people come in and it, it was a little scary. I was amazed that this man and this woman were so comfortable with the homeless people that would come in. Some high on drugs, some intoxicated. But not all of them. They all were looking for just some love and some help. And so we got to feed them and share the love of Jesus. And we shared God's word with them. And we sang with them. And we fed them. But I have to be honest, the most important thing I felt we did with them was take time. To sit. To talk to them. Melissa Westerman, she's sitting back there. She probably was the best. That girl just sat down and started talking with strangers. That's scary stuff sometimes, isn't it? To do that. So how can you gather together with two or three people and make an impact in the lives of others who don't know Jesus Christ? Because the time is coming when Jesus will return and it's gonna to be too late. 
I mean, we like to live this passive life. It's easy. And just cruise until the day Jesus comes in because I'm good. But that's not what Jesus has called us to do in this good works of, of helping others. Now, maybe that Sunday when we went out, I, I, I was tired. I had a long weekend. And it was the final step. And, and waking up, it was like, oh. But it was such a blessing when we're done. It's such a blessing to see how God impacts others when you just say yes to him. And we have all those opportunities here at Timothy to reach out to people. As you sit in your chair, as you have a neighbor, as you have a friend, how can you go and encourage someone else and do something small? It matters. Because I think Jesus gave us such a strong warning. People are going to go to hell if we don't do something about it. That's why we live in the now and not yet. He's giving us time. He could come at any time and end this. But, but God wants all people to come and to know him as their Lord and Savior. But that day is going to come. And it's going to stop. So somehow we have to die to ourselves and live for Jesus as we walk with him. I picked this up too from uh, Pastor Ryan's sermon last week though. I mean, we have to get out of our selfish nature of stuff and carrying our crosses. Those things in our life that God has called us to do that don't always come with joy, that aren't always fun, that aren't always exciting. But we have to die to our selfish desires or, or our fears of unknown sometimes. Going down on Benton Street was scary. But God was there and God protected us. And as, as all those people were sitting in the room and I saw all different kinds of cultures and types of living and struggles going on, I could see God working. And so we have to die to ourselves and, and do those opportunities. Because that's what the words transforming lives through Christ mean. It's more than words we put on the screen. It's more than seeing it on a bulletin. It's action words that are very real. There is so much behind those words. That it's more than just regurgitation. And it's powerful stuff. I mean, we're reminded in the Gospels when it says, whoever clings to this life will lose it. And whoever loses this life will save it. It's not our works. We know that our salvation comes in Jesus Christ. But we can reject that. We can deny it. We can put this big wall up and cling to this life today. And it may be too late. We have to let go. We have to seek God and Jesus and help others. You see, Jesus promises that you shall be taken. He's going to take you with him, to be with him. He's going to carry you up in that flash, that moment. And we get to celebrate the excitement that only can come through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And praise God, we have that gift. Thank God that we don't have to fear a separation from God. Thank God that he has given us the privilege to share this with other people. And Jesus, again, he continues to give these warnings when he says, I tell you, on that night, two people will be in one bed, and one will be taken away, and the other one left. Two women will be grinding grain together, and one will be taken, and the other one left. And two men shall be in the field, one shall be taken, and one shall be left. And you know where the one left is going, right? I'm going to say it for the third time. They're going to hell. That's big news. And we, as brothers and sisters in Christ, can make a difference. We don't just come and worship on a Sunday morning and call it finished. We don't just come, worship and praise God, meet our family, meet our friends, have a wonderful time, go home, and on Monday the whole world changed. No, that's not what we do. We change the world. We transform lives through Christ because faith 
at that moment when Jesus comes. It's a dividing line. I'm not here to scare you that your faith is in jeopardy. We know that's all in God's hands. My hope is that I can encourage you to be the light of Christ to someone else who needs to know Jesus, to be that instrument of mercy and grace, to share that incredible hope that we have. But maybe you are struggling. Maybe you're wondering. I was always told a long time ago by somebody, if you're worried about your faith, don't worry about it. Because you must have faith in God to be worried about it. But if you're trusting or struggling, rather, then talk to somebody. Speak to somebody. Get in God's Word. Are you prepared to meet Jesus if He were to come back today? Let's pray that God continues to bless us in our lives as we thank and praise Him for the gift of faith that He has given us. We celebrate the life we have with Jesus. We celebrate the gift of eternal life we'll have. Amen? Amen. 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 And so now our calling then is to go out into the world and share it with others. So go out with God's blessing. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. And so are you ready for your test? Amen. All right, the next slide is our test. Are you regurgitating it? Or do you mean it? This week, I will love my neighbor, forgive my enemies, grow in God's word, share my faith, Pray with us, and together, I promise, through the will of God and the Holy Spirit, we'll transform lives through Christ. Amen. Let us rise together, give praise and honor to God as we join our voices in the same.
God's peace to you. Have a wonderful day and be sure to share the love of Christ with someone.